Hello, Nikolai Markovich from Echo Lake Technologies, echolaketech.com. In this video, I'm going to show you four different ways that you can implement the drop down element. In this first example here, uh, it's with static choices. We're using days of the week. And this next one, we are using a search to also give the days of the week. This third option here is using option sets for giving us the days of the week. And then lastly, we're going to walk through a data structure in which we don't have to do a search for getting the, the days of the week. Now, there are some trade-offs for each one of these scenarios here for setting up your dropdown. In this first one, with the static choices, as you'll see, that you'll be typing in these values here. So it really is a static list. Um, you'd have to go in and manually update it within the element uh, to change the list. For this next one using search, this is probably the most powerful and flexible way of providing the list in the dropdown because we're going to be using a search uh, for the different days of, of the week. And this also allows you to put in some constraints uh, so if you had a list of other items, say cars or houses that you wanted to put in a drop down, you could add constraints and so forth. So it's a much more powerful uh, mechanism using search to get your list. This third one using option sets, <clears throat> this one is, is basically, it allows you to go and create a, a list of options. Um, so the days of the week here, for instance, it also allows you to add other parameters within the um, option. So just kind of going down here, we have the days of the week, and you can see these different colors here. Uh, these are actually images just saying the days of the week as well. But with option sets, you have that opportunity um, to be more flexible. And rounding this out, we have the data structure approach here. And with this one, uh, as you'll see in the database, this one is tied to the, the user. Uh, this doesn't need to go and do a search in, in the database uh, because it's tied to the user. And we'll talk a bit more about that in a moment. I do want to do a quick refresh here because one of the things you'll see um, with the option set in the data structure, because it's not doing a search in the database, um, as opposed to this, this right here, uh, it's going to load faster. So from a performance perspective, option set and data structure is the better approach. So let's just do... So you can see here that there's a bit of a delay here for doing the search. And there it is. Before I continue on, uh, please subscribe to my channel uh, and give me a thumbs up. I do appreciate that. And as a subscriber, you will get notified of upcoming videos. So let's go over here to the, the design. We'll start with static choices. Again, for this one, in the element, we've got a choice of static versus dynamic. And for static, we simply just type in the values that we want, like that. And to get the element, it's uh, simply down here to drop down like that. Choose an option, and you can change this to pick one like that, and you'll see it show up. Static choices, and then simply type in choice one, choice two, and so forth. Now for the next one, dynamic choices, uh, we're using a search here and dynamic choices. We're going to be picking a type of choice. So from the, the database, the data structures, I have day of week set up. And now we're going to be doing a search for days of week right here. So to get that, just let me delete it. Do a search for, we get this pop-up, and then day of week. I don't have any constraints on here, but as I was mentioning earlier, you could put in um, some constraints if you were um, having a list of vehicles or houses or, or whatever your list may be, you could go in and add constraints. 
And then the next thing here is current option. So bubble is, is good like this. If you come over here, it'll give you current option. And then we're going to be picking the day. And then for default value, so similar to over here, the default value is Monday. I just had to type that in. Over here, we need to do another search, again, for day of week. And then we're picking the first item. And the first item just happens to be Monday. And if I come back over here, you can see Monday. And that's how I get the default value. So for instance, just as a quick demo, if I came over here and changed this to Tuesday, and I went over and re-ran it, my value here is going to change to Tuesday. I'm just going to do that to go back to Monday. And let's now take a look at the, the data structure for this. So I've got day of week. This is my data structure. And to do that, I'll just type in a test. And then it gets created. So day of week. I've got day as type of text and picture, picture as a image. And again, that picture is simply these uh, in colors here, these are actually images, even though they say Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and so forth. And let me just come back down here to test. So for test, create a new field, and then day of week. So text, and then we have the picture, and that is simply an image right here. So that's how we set that up. I'm going to delete it since I'm not using that data structure. Uh, let me go back here to data for a moment. So now we're going to go to the app data. And just to show you, so the day of the week, I went in and I created these um, different days. And if I click on the little pencil here, it'll open up. And I just simply went in and if I click on this here, it'll pop up the folder that I had for the different uh, images. And then the day is Sunday as a text field and so forth. So again, in, in your app, um, of course, days of the week, there's seven days uh, in the week. In your app, you may have a, a dynamic list. Again, vehicles, houses, whatever it may be. Uh, so this list could be longer. And so that's a powerful way of using, using a search here. So you can grow your list dynamically. But there is a performance hit for, for doing that. And that's how we set up the dynamic version of the drop-down menu. This next one is using option sets. And again, choosing an option, default value, dynamic choices, days of week. OK, so for this one. One thing to point out, to be aware of, so, and we're going to get in a little more details in a moment, um, the, the data structure of day of week that I just showed you, which is right here, um, that's a, a data structure in the database. For option sets, okay, that's slightly different. So it's not day of week. After the list of all these data structures, scroll down, you see days of week. So if you go in my data structure, and I'm just going to pop over there because this is an important thing to be aware of. Zoom is my last data structure. So over here, my last data structure, and then it flips over, bubble flips over to the option sets. So we want to pick days of week. Current option is display. Again, Bubble is, is good about doing this, so if I just delete that, Bubble will tell me current option and then display. And display, you'll see in a moment, is the name of the, the day of the week. And then the default value, similarly to get, uh, as we did with the search over here, we did the search. First item over here is going to be the option set days of week and then picking the first item. So days of week and first item. And that's how we set up the option sets. I'm going to come over here to data to show you how, how to set this up. So we had data types. I showed you the days of week. 
the app data associated with it. Now for option sets, you want to click on this button here, option sets. So I've already created days of week, right? And then within days of week, I have a picture. So that's a picture that just basically says the day of the week in the different colors. And then display. And display is going to be these labels here, these option names here. So to do this, we're going to create, I'm just going to do a, an attribute here. So uh, test, and I'll just call it a type text like that. So now when I come down to modifying attributes, actually, I take that back because I'm jumping ahead. To create each one of these days of the week, I want to do a new option. So I'll call it any day. Create that. So we've got any day. And now I can go in and I can modify the attributes. And again, those attributes, so that's the name, any day. Loading a picture. Go in like this and test. I'll just type in text field. All right, so now if I go in and any day has got those values associated with it. So if I look at, and I'm just going to delete that for now. So Monday, we've got Monday here in the picture. Again, Monday is a picture. And then I'll save it. So that's how you set up the, the option sets. It's a little bit different than the, the data structure, and I'm just going to delete test here. Uh, but that's how we set it up. So we come over here, we create an option set. Bubble will open this up over here for days a week, and then we can create attributes. And then we come down here to add the options, the days of the week. So this is, um, while in the drop down here, we treat it as a dynamic because it's a, a, a list of dynamic values uh, because we have to come over here and we're creating a, a list. And I just, let me just go and delete this and I'll show you quickly. So test, create test over here, Call picture for the picture. It's going to be an image like that. And then I can come down here and do, uh, so let's call it attribute one, or let's say, yeah, let's see here, uh, entry, entry one. We create that. And then we can modify what's in there. So entry one, we can add the picture. and so forth. So now that's available. This option set test is now available and we've preloaded it with this, this data. Now let's move over to this last choice, which is using, again, dynamic choices, day of the week. Now notice, I'm gonna highlight this again because it is an important nuance. This day of the week is part of the data structure if you actually scroll down here, you see days of the week, and that's the option set. So make sure you choose day of the week from the data structure versus days of week, which is an option set. And again, when we did the search here, it's searching the database day of week. And here, it's going to be current users day of week. And the reason why it's current users day of week, I'm just going to jump here to the, the data structure to users. Um, actually, before I get to users, day of week, right? We walked through this a few moments ago. We got day and picture. And now we have user. And we have day of week as a list of days. So basically, as a user, I have this data field, day of week, which is of type a list of days of week. So to do that, I'll just do a quick test here. I'll say test day, and this is going to be days of week. And it's click on this box here and create it. And now we have what is it? Test day as a list of days. So that's how you set it up for under user. Uh, 
let's see, where did I go here? So days, day of week. And now by setting up the data structure that way, when I have my dropdown, it's gonna be current users, day of week. So you see all these different choices in the data structure, day of week. And then again, bubble gives me current option as a default, and I just pick day. And then current users, day of week, again, first item. Now, I picked user because it's kind of straightforward and, and, and easy and whatnot. Um, now, you could have, again, if you had vehicles, you could have the uh, different, um, in your database, you could have different truck types, car types, and so forth. And if you set up your data structure so that there's a list of cars or a list of trucks that are under a a uh, custom data type. So say I had vehicles as a data type, and in, in vehicles I could have trucks, and I cars, list of trucks, list of cars, and so forth. And then that would allow me to use the same approach. Uh, so instead of user, it would be vehicles, and then trucks, cars, and so on and so forth. So you wouldn't have to do a search, and that will help you from a um, performance perspective because you're not going to be doing searches. A couple other things to note on this. So as I mentioned, doing a search, it's very powerful, very flexible. You can put uh, within the search. You can also put constraints and so forth. But it is a performance hit. With option sets, you can see over here, as with the data structure, with the option sets, I can put other different fields in there. So I can put pictures. I could put number fields. I could put other text fields, and so on and so forth. So it gives me a lot of flexibility. The thing is, is that it's it's not a search. So I have to go in, or you have to go in and add more, more fields here. Okay. So one thing with that, let me just do a refresh. So a behavioral thing uh, between option sets and doing a search or making a change in the, the data. Okay, let's do a refresh here. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and change one of these in the database. So let's go to app data and days a week. So I'm going to go and change this Sunday to Sunday XXX like that. I'm going to save it. I come over here, you see Sunday XXX, Sunday XXX, because I'm, I'm doing the search from the database, Sunday XXX, because I'm a user and within user, I have days of week in my data structure. Okay, so I didn't have to do a refresh. The database update happened automatically. To contrast that with option sets, if I come over here and do the similar thing with XXX, Okay, now I have to do a page update. And when I do the page update, you'll see that the XXX is there. So that's just another thing to understand the difference between option sets and fetching data from the, the database, either via search or the way your data structure is. Hopefully this video was helpful. Uh, again, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to get notified on future videos. If you have any questions, leave me a note down in the comments below. Thank you.